guys, welcome to another episode of the show. My name is Maranasa Awutsu. If this is your first time seeing my face, please do not make it your last by clicking on the subscribe button so that anytime that I put up new videos, you'll be among the first persons to know. On today's show, I want to talk about finance. Open your ears very, very widely. I am not a finance coach. In short, I am talking about this because I'm very shitty at managing my own money. So I wanted us to talk a bit about it and then we'll exchange, you know, a couple of idea, what I know now and what you know, you'll be able to tell me in the comment section so that the next six months of this year will not be a waste. And I would also talk briefly about a new movie that I saw this week, Divorce in the Black. And this is the Tyler Perry movie. So prepare your mind and get your heart right. And yeah, when we come up from the short break, we will get a jump into this conversation. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. If at this point um, you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you are waiting for. Is it on to you? I kneel down, put my hands together and start begging you people. I'm praying day and night that you people will subscribe. You keep coming on here week in, week out to watch these beautiful videos that I put out. Um, what you can do to support me, I'm not asking you for money, I'm not even asking you that you should break the bank or anything. It's not going to cost you anything to just click on the subscribe button, leave comments, tell me what you like about the video, what you didn't like about the video. Of course, I'm never going to say or have an opinion that every one of you agrees with 100%. So tell me in the comment section what you agree with and what you do not agree with. That's the only way that we can share ideas and you know help each other see where we are coming from or our standpoint so yeah i hope that you do subscribe and i hope that you always come back to leave your comments when you watch these videos and i hope that you share and yeah click on the notification bell as well so that you will always know whenever i put out new videos now before i get into finance you know and all of that all of that again a sidebar this is a sidebar. Let's take a small detour to the last conversation that we had on here. Last week, I had a guest, one of my oldest friends from primary school, was here. And we talked about how to navigate mixed income friendship, especially if you are the broke person. And I thought it wise that, you know what? Now we've talked about you're broke, you have rich friends, or you have friends whose money level are a bit higher than yours. And now, We've talked about how you can navigate that. And today, I wanted us to focus on why you are actually the broke person in the group, right? And that leads me to, in Nigeria right now, there are these different categories of money level, um, the low income earners, the middle class, and then the upper echelon. Now, I'm going to be focusing on the low income earners, not, not necessarily low income, because if you say low income, I would... Think that you mean people who are earning the minimum wage that is set right now. So if, if we are going by that, it would be around fifty thousand naira, seventy thousand naira. So I wouldn't draw the cap at that. I would say people who are earning between one hundred and fifty thousand naira to two hundred thousand naira, which not surprising. A lot of millennials and even Gen Zs who are coming up right now. Their salaries are scaled within, let even say, a hundred k to two hundred thousand dollar. So for us now, I would say that that is what I would refer to as middle class. Now let's get into it. If you're earning less than hundred thousand dollar, truthfully, you're doing badly, and it's not because it's not. I, I know that it's not a function of your skill or your talent, but it's more so the shitty economy that we have in Nigeria. And so if you're earning less than a hundred thousand naira, there's already the stakes are already against you, honestly, because housing in Abuja, hey, housing in Abuja is one of the craziest things that siphons people's money. And so if you're earning less than a hundred thousand naira or even a hundred thousand naira, you're already at a very big disadvantage, right? And so whatever I'm gonna to say today would almost seem like Mara, I need you to get your 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 mouth out of the clouds or get your 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 nose out of the clouds and be realistic with us so but 
I have also been in this situation again, like I said, and I'm speaking about this because this is something that I've started to do over the last year. And even though it's not, you know, particularly very, very helpful, I know that it has helped me in a very, very big way. So if you're earning again between 100,000 or 150,000 naira to 200,000 naira, I know that things are hard, right? But it would continue to be high if you don't budget properly. The first point I'm going to be talking about is budgeting. No matter what you're earning, right? If you don't budget properly, you will never, never understand where your money is going. And that's not because you're spending lavishly per se, but it's just because you kind of count for, oh, this money came. I know I transferred money to my father. I know I transferred money to my sister. I know I paid electricity bill. I paid money for that and this. But now I'm left with nothing. So the best way to curb this issue is to budget properly. And what budgeting means is writing out a list of everything that you spend money on in a month and then putting out your expenses on one side and ensuring that the income you are earning tallies the, the expenses that you have for that month. It would be bizarre, it would be maddening for you to earn 150,000 naira and your expenses is 200,000 naira. To budget properly, I have read a couple of books. Um, if you haven't read The Smart Money Woman, as a woman in Nigeria, I think that you should read that book. Um, they have even turned it into a movie or a series of some sort on Netflix, but I would recommend that you actually sit down and read the book, especially the first one. Read The Smart Money Woman and then The Smart Money Tribe, if you will. It's a very beautiful story that when it talks about the different family dynamics, it also talks about specifically about finances and why a very rich man would die and the family is broke and why you are any over 600,000 naira in your oil and gas company and you're still not able to live properly. You're basically living from hand to mouth. So I believe that this whole principle relies on the fact that no matter what you're earning, as little as it may be, 100k, 150k, 500k, if you don't follow this basic principle of budget say, you're always going to run the risk of running into debt. And what we're trying to avoid is learning how to save a lot more. Secondly, is budgeting properly. Thirdly, is being able to stop your poor or bad money habits. So if you don't budget properly, especially following the basic principle, no matter what you earn, is always going to be this very hackling task. So now, people who know more than me in finance have said that there is the 50, 30, and 20 rule. Now, the 50, 20, and 30 rule means that if you earn 100,000 naira, for instance, 50% of that your income should go into expenses. And then 30% should go into your wants. And then 20% should go into your savings. So I know that sometimes we, we have so many poor money habits that we end up borrowing money before the end of the month. So what happens is the money that you're supposed to save, you use it to settle bills that you've carried on from last month, which this has happened to me consistently, right? I have started to budget for over a year. I had an exercise book. I used to do it on my phone before, but I noticed that it wasn't effective. So now I have a notebook that is almost half full. Yeah, it's half full because I've consistently, month in, month out, written down every single thing that I spend money on in the month. And so when other things arises, I start to think, oh, that means I need to call down on something else to be able to afford this. But we'll get into that later. Right? So if 50% of your income cannot cover your expenses, there's a problem somewhere. In your head, you already know, okay, 50% of my money is going into my expenses, 20% is going in for savings, and 30% is going in for once. Now, you understand that mathematics, right? The problem now becomes, how does this translate from paper to real life? And that's where a lot of people find it very, very difficult. If you've written this thing down and you realize that you are not able to stick by this thing, what that means is that you are spending more than you're earning and you're also spending lavishly on things that you actually don't need. I know that Nigeria right now, the economy is shit. And so saying that you're earning 100,000 naira 
and 50,000 naira should be able to cover your expenses. Sounds like this very bizarre thing. Because, first of all, if you live alone and you're trying to get food stuff for a single person, I live alone and half the time I take um, 50,000 naira to the market for food stuff. And it's, it's crazy that you come back home sometimes and you're like, what did I buy? This is for somebody who actually budgets properly, right? I come back home and I'm like, what did I buy? Why am I spending so much money on? So I understand what that means, right? So I think that um, what that would mean is you need to come back with some things that are expensive and you need to stop living lavishly. Say for instance, I spend as much as that because I end up buying a kilo of chicken or full chicken, you know, a kilo of beef and a kilo of this and that. I buy rice. So I used to do bulk buying, um, but I haven't bulk bought anything within the last three months uh, because I basically spent my savings or what I've been able to save up from January to May on surgery and restoring some things that were taking and all that and all that so i spent you know my money so now i'm on zero i'm on zero and i'm supposed to be paying rent in the next six months and so if i need to pay rent in the next six months and my 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 salary is this small and my rent is this big how am i going to achieve that how am i going to achieve that so i have to sit there again and start recalculating now, my saving grace is that I've been able to join a group of persons who we sort of save money together. Um, your work people call this a job, right? And so you save money together and every month, one person takes the money. And I, I think that is always what saves me at the end of the day. Okay, so I save money on Piggy Vest. Everybody, all my friends and I save money on Piggy Vest. In short, I'm an advocate for Piggy Vest. I tell people the best way that you can save without thinking about it so much is setting up a a piggy account where you send money to um it automatically you automate it so that the money just goes every time your salary drops maybe on 30th of every month or on the 31st of every month at some so time take out some amount of money for me or like me i do it manually where once i get my salary i send a box on to my piggy vest and i lock it straight away so that has also been a saving grace for me for the past three years I mean, you're using PDFs for more than three years, even since 2021 or 2020. Since 2020, I always ensure that no matter how small it is, I keep some money so that it can save me for rent, you know, especially for rent, even. So, yeah, budgeting properly also means that you need to cut back on a lot of things that are basically wants. You can do without chicken. chicken. Chicken is expensive. You can buy fish instead. So as like as easy as it sounds, it's not so easy. When I was earning seventy something thousand naira a few years ago, we were still living. It was difficult, but we were still living. But I think that because of that economic situation and this economic situation, times have changed, and I know that it's going to be a lot more difficult. But I promise you that if you look at your list, that's why I'm always an advocate of writing them down. If you look at your list, you have to see on paper that. Oh, actually, this thing I can do without it this month. Strike it out. So, yeah, the first thing is budgeting. The 50, 30, and 20 rule. Stick by that. And I promise you that, provided that that 20% of your salary is going somewhere at the end of 12 months or at the end of six months, you would, you would see for yourself that it wasn't just all for a waste. I didn't suffer not to eat chicken for six months just to not have savings. So, you rec I feel like you become sold, even. Um, because you're seeing this 20,000 naira or 20% 20 of your money that you've kept aside. So the next thing I would say is, I feel like sometimes you don't have something to save. You're not even borrowing or any of that, but you don't have something to save because you're paying yourself last. Every time I get paid, my salary comes at a certain time of the day. And so when it comes, even my partner is, sometimes is shocked, like, why don't you leave this thing to you later? And in my head, I'm like, no, I, I take my book or my budget book and I start to do the transfer here. Oh, this is for this, this is for this, this is for this. And I make sure that that very minute, I do everything that I'm supposed to do. And I send money to everywhere I'm supposed to send money to so that I don't start 
thinking. I'd rather I send money everywhere else and now start struggling to say, oh, wait, um, for food, I need to cut down this and this and that, than to spend money on a want and now start thinking, okay, I have all of these things and now I don't have the, the actual money to sort this major or big thing that I'm supposed to do. So yeah, I think that for me too, I am going to be learning to pay myself first. Um, usually what I would do before would be that when, once I sort that money, I would go and buy myself shawarma, a can of um, milk or yogurt, and I just sit down and take that in or eat chicken wings or something. Previously, it used to be red wine, but I have sort of cut that out and also so. But I think now that because I aggressively need to save money for the next six months, um, I am going to, in this next six months of the year, um, pay myself first. Of course, budget everything and also pay myself first. So in my budgeting of 50, 30, 20 rule, I've also decided that the money, the 30% that is supposed to be for my wants, um, which I had broken it down previously, I had put some things like, oh, sending money to my sister as a want, and not actually a need, right? And some other things like that, like that, like that. I had categorized it as that. So whilst sending money to her, and you know, a few other things there are actually a necessity, I decided to categorize it under my wants and not my needs, because um, while it is very, very important, I know that at least 15% of that 30% can source that, and then the next 15% is supposed to be for my wants. So what I have started to now think about doing is maybe take 5% of that, right, and pay myself. Now, that payment would now be towards, oh, do I want to hang out at the movies this month? Which is something I did um, in June as well. Um, I went to the cinemas. I, I know I didn't talk about it. I went to the cinemas and I saw Bad Boy for Life and it was a very, very interesting movie. Um, so I decided that 5% of that would be towards something that I, I want to enjoy, like a recreational activity or something on my own or with friends or something. But I've decided that at least once a month, I'm going to use that 5% to solve that. And then the next 10%, I'm going to save it towards my emergency fund. Again, I've read Smart Money Woman since 2018 or 2017. I can't remember for sure now. And this is something they spoke about heavily on the Smart Money Woman. And while it makes sense in theory, I think that actually carrying it out is very, very difficult. And so what I gain that I have decided to do is there are two options towards saving for emergency funds. The first one is your 20% for your savings. You can decide to break it down and keep um, half of that towards your emergency fund and half of that towards your, save, your normal savings. And there was also the idea that if you don't have something that you're saving towards, it actually won't click in your head that it is important. So if you have an, if you're saving towards an emergency fund, and they said that, again, fi again, finance people say that your emergency fund should be like six months of your entire salary saved up in one place, right? And so if you already know what your emergency fund is, it would help you save towards that. And now for your savings itself, you need to have an idea. You need to know exactly what you're saving for. Because if you're just saving for nothing, it would you, you would not take it as seriously as, Oh, I need to save for, God forbid, surgery. Or like me now, I need to, by next year, by the grace of God, save for a camera. Or like this month, I know that I'm going to be taking a part of what I'm supposed to use as my want to buy a new microphone. You know, and I'm hoping that it's not one of those expensive ones. So if you don't write all of these things out, you will not know what money you're using for what money. So at the end of the day, it just becomes or blurred out and all that to have exactly what you're saving for, it would make a lot more sense. So the first way to solve your emergency fund is splitting your savings into two. One pass for emergency and one pass for that thing that you want to buy at the end of the month or at the end of the year or at the end of six months, right? Now, that's one way. Now, the second thing is taking that 10% that is supposed to be for your wants and saving it. This is what aggressive saving looks like you're looking to actually get something that is of that importance to you, then you should be able to cut down on some of those your expensive hobbies and plan towards saving it. And I understand 
sometimes people say that you cannot keep working and working and working and not enjoying your money. Um, you may die one day and your next of kin will have access to your money. And while it seems like such a downer to think about it that way, I know it is true. It is true. But if you don't, if you're not disciplined as a person to say that, yeah, I can look for enjoyment that is within the means of what I can afford, then you're a joker. You're literally a joker. And that is the reason why it's like you're eating from hand to mouth at the end of every month, despite or in spite of what you earn. So if you have expensive hobbies like going to the polo club or traveling from one state to another, honestly, call that one that. Except, except you categorize it as a want. And the percentage of your money that is for wants can conveniently cover for that. I think that you're doing yourself a disservice. There are minimal ways that you can enjoy yourself without taking out of your emergency fund or your savings money. So if you have expensive things for this, um, learn how to do one or two things within a month and ensure that you're budgeting properly for it in a way that it still allows you to save money towards your emergency fund and towards, you know, that other big thing that is on one side. Um, there is also a saying that the more money you earn, the more your expenses skyrocket, which was what I was trying to say earlier, right? Um, I was saying that I spent at least 50000 naira on food for myself, which again, is not really for myself because people come around and um, my sister also comes around. But let's say that it's for myself because I live alone, right? And so when I spend as much as that, again, um, it's because of how much I am earning. Right, and while it seems very, very excessive, it is not really excessive, especially with the economy that we're in right now. So, the more you earn, the more your expenses grow. I don't know why it is like that, but that is what it says. My friend, if you were talking yesterday, and she was also complaining about how much she has been able to do outside of her main job, um, and yet it almost seems like she cannot see the money that she's making from this extra of so the bills that she has to pay. And I think that if you are a provider, um, I don't want to use firstborn now because there are so many people who are not firstborns, but they are also providers for their families. If you're a provider, you're almost never going to have anything left for yourself, which is why it is always very, very important that you pay yourself first and that payment should either be for your own enjoyment or towards your emergency fund. And then secondly, if you're budgeting properly, what that means is that you should have categorized the bills that you're supposed to pay as every month to your family or to your friends or whatever whoever it is you're providing for under one of these two things your wants or your expenses so if that happens i feel like the idea here is that no matter how much it is that you earn no matter how much bills or responsibilities you have ensure that 20 percent of your salary is going to your savings and so when that money is taken out you're not looking at, let's say for a 100k salary, taking out 20,000 naira for your savings, and now you have 80,000 naira. 50,000 naira is supposed to be for your expenses. I feel like you need to categorize one of those bills you're paying to your family or to the people you're providing for under your expenses or under your wants. And so when you do that, no matter what happens, you know that the only thing that you're putting down on is probably something on the list of your wants. So if you do it that way, there is no way that. You can now go back and take money that you've already saved and start using it for somebody else's emergency. And I say this, and I, I, I think I learned this in 2019. If you keep sending money to people without having your savings, a day will come that you would start complaining and those same people that you are providing for would ask you, but you've been working for one full year. Why don't you have savings? Or why don't you have money for rent? They would forget very easily that they were part of the people who were taking a chunk of your salary. So no matter what it is, you can never blame anybody for how badly you're managing your own money. Because at the end of the day, whether you give them that money or not, there are certain monies that are very, very important, which is why again, you must either go into your expenses or go into your, um, your wants. But there are some of these things that you will ask that you know that from your heart of heart, you don't have this money. So I don't know whether sometimes it is savior complex or sometimes it's not wanting to seem as a bad person. Um, but it doesn't matter is 
So I started budgeting. Honestly, when I finished budgeting, what I have left is maybe 20 or 30,000 euro, uh, which is to use for transportation because I barely ever go anywhere or to fix one or two things that they go, you know, bad in the house or just for small, small emergency or, you know, and all of that. So when somebody calls me out of the blue and says, Mara, I need 20,000 euro, I don't have, which is the truth. I don't have because the 20% of my own salary has gone into, into something else, which I can't go and pull out for you, right? Or the 50% is supposed to be for my expenses. It's for my expenses. I can now take it out and give it to you. So it, it is madness that sometimes what we think we are doing as good people is actually damaging our own selves because 12 months rolls by and then you're faced with the reality that you don't have your money for rent. Nobody's going to answer you then because you seem really unserious, especially if you earn between 150000 to 200000 euro. Nobody's going to believe you. Oh, I squandered my money, not necessarily on useless things, but because I had surgery and I had to pay for that. I had to pay bills. I had to do um, aftercare and I still had to re refund something that got stolen in the house. So, you know, all of those things, I know that I, I didn't spend money. So, but that one is my own cup of tea. No, my landlord is not going to hear at the end of the year that, oh, it's because he did so and so. Or nobody would hear that you've been working consistently for 12 months and you don't have money for your rent. So please, I beg you guys, um, you need to stop your poor money habits. If you budget properly, you're not going to be borrowing money to settle debt. Because if you budget properly, you're going to save money. You're going to split your money into your expenses and your wants. And your wants are not must-haves. They are not must haves, meaning you can still save that money. So, what's your emergency fund? And also, just take a little percent, maybe 5% or 10% of that, and do something nice. Again, you don't have to have expensive hobbies. And if you do have expensive hobbies, ensure that you're writing it down as your, part of your expenses for that month. Meaning, you have to do check and balance. You see, this thing is a must that you must do for that month. That means that you know that probably not going to buy oatmeal because oatmeal is expensive or you know that oh i'm not going to eat lamb chops or i'm not going to go to one fast, fancy restaurant or the other you are not saving because you're not taking actionable steps towards managing your finance and it's that simple because no matter what you earn if you live within your means or according to your means then you will not start screaming at the end of the month you also need to stop having savior complex you don't have money you don't have money Going to take money out of your savings account to fund somebody else's lifestyle is a very foolish thing to do. I don't expect that you've wasted, like me, you've wasted the first six months of your year not having any more savings left. And now the remaining six months of the year, you're still going to keep saying, oh, but I am so little. I am so little. Learn to eat rice with pomo. Learn to eat rice with blackfish or what do you call that thing? Yeah, blackfish or those small round cats catfish learn to basically live according to your means because at the end of the day you the person you're trying to impress is not going to save you nobody is going to save you but yourself or you're expecting that somebody else to come and co cover your bills a few years ago my brother made some bad money decisions and by the time that the month rolled by for him to pay his rent he called me and said that oh he wanted he needed money to pay rent and as terrible as it sounded I laughed and I said, oh, actually, these are the options that you have. Nobody's going to give you money to pay your rent. If you had money all through the year and you were thinking, oh, I'm going to spend this money and money is going to come again from somewhere else. Um, unfortunately, you can't blame anybody for that. If you lose your job, yes, it's a terrible thing, understandably. But you have all this money coming for this period of time. And instead of saving, you kept hoping that, oh, and you keep seeing money, that's a very bad, bad, bad thing to do. So have an emergency fund and also have your savings account and have your rent money. So maybe your savings account is for your rent money and your emergency fund is just something you're trying to build to ensure that, oh, one day you can easily just wake up and take money. Emergency fund also helps in situations where um, they just, what if, God forbid, there's a crisis somewhere they ask you to leave, who will you start calling for money in this? economy so you have to actually protect yourself and take care of yourself because nobody's going to do it for you if you ask me out to somewhere and i say that i'm not coming please i want you to know 
that from now henceforth, I'm learning to say no. I'm learning. I have been saying no, but I'm, I'm reiterating it again so that it sticks to my own brain. You cannot wake up and tell me that you have a plan to go to Zanzibar. You have been planning towards that. And all of a sudden, because you think I earn okay, you would call me and say, oh, Mara, I plan to go to Zanzibar for the summer. I think we should go together. And I'll tell you, oh, yeah, let's go because, oh, all my friends are going and I must go too. That's a very foolish thing to do. So if you actually want to go somewhere, you want to travel out, Ghana, I mean, even Togo, you have to plan towards it. You have to actively plan towards it. Okay, um, from this my emergency, from this my savings, I need to keep 5% aside or 10% aside just to be able to fund a trip for me next year. But waking up to listen to somebody who has been saving for a while or somebody who has that money to blow every month to tell you, oh, let's go somewhere and yay, you want to go just because you're a very foolish person. Again, nobody's going to take care of you if you don't take care of yourself. We are actually grown. We are grown people now. You can't be making decisions like a child anymore. Children spend money and their parents cover for them. Now, you spend money and it's gone. It's not going to come from anywhere. So building wealth is not going to happen. And I know we always say that nobody builds wealth from salary. Um, the money that you need to actually build, the amount of wealth that you're looking for, you need more money to do that. So how about save towards something, maybe your passion, and then use that money to fund that with the hopes that this, your side hustle is going to cover for some of those things that you, some of those hobbies that you really like or some of those ones that you really want to have. So yeah, um, you can't be jumping up and saying, oh yeah, let's go, let's go here, let's go there. No, learn to tell people no. Oh, I have got the and so I want for this. Unfortunately, I can't take out that money. And also learn not to have chuku chuku eye. Because I think it's chuku chuku eye that makes us live above our means sometimes. Or because you think that, like we said last week, you and your friends grew up together and now your friend has come into a big amount of money you haven't and you're trying to claw your way into being oh we are friends we must hang out together no you absolutely don't it is also unfair for you to always go and hang out with your friends because you think they would keep paying your bills for you do you understand what i mean so learn to say no even to people offering to pay your bills every time you go out learning to say no because you cannot afford it learning to say no because you haven't budgeted properly for it if you can't squeeze out money good and fine but if you cannot do it do not borrow money to fund a hobby. Do not borrow money that you've already budgeted to, to fund something that you've already budgeted for. It is a very, very poor money habit. Borrowing money is a very poor money habit. Learn to live within your means as little as it is. You are suffering, but the only way you can come out of that suffering or build wealth is saving towards a passion that you like or asking your employer for a raise, which was something I did two years ago and it worked for me right it worked for me at that point so i'm not saying that it works for every every employer but sometimes you have to try and i tried and it worked out for me but now i know that that will not work again if i say i want to try it this time you know so you also have to think about you know where i am what can i do that would generate more income for me so building wealth is it that you learn how to save aggressively Learn to save towards your emergency fund and have your normal savings account or fund a passion. Fund a passion and learn a skill and eventually you're going to make more money from that. Other than that, um, I don't know how else we can grow money, but I think that the very first key to growing your money is learning to manage your income, no matter how little it is right now from where you are. All the principles are always the same. If you can't learn how to manage 10,000 naira, how will you learn to manage 100,000 naira? And the reality is that things are hard right now, but there are still little, little things that you can call back on that would help towards having a savings account or an emergency account. Again, like I said, I am not a finance coach. I basically may not know what I'm talking about here, but um, if you have done any of these things and it's working well for you, please tell me in the comment section. If you have other money I advise to give, please write it in the comment section so that myself and others 
who are in need of this advice can come into the comment section and read your wise thoughts. Um, yeah, that's that's where I would end this money conversation. So where I would end the video for today. I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. If you're watching online, you probably might not get the full gist. I'm not sure yet because of how lengthy it is. Um, so you may have to go to Spotify to get the full thing. But I hope that you like the video. I hope that you're following on Spotify, Rave with Mara. Um, I hope that you subscribe on YouTube, Mara Abutso. And I hope that I see you in my next video. Bye-bye.